the last few days thinking about David and just watching the silliness and the fun and everybody was having fun. I don't think anybody could be accused of not having had a great everybody time. Had a great time. Everybody had a great time. Dave's had an incredible influence on this scene. You know, we've got a circle of friends who know Dave and know his importance in the music scene and just know he's a great songwriter and he's a great guitar player. Very, very good songwriter. His, his approach was different from Terry's and I don't know what to say other than he, uh, his stuff was a little more jangly, a little more jangle, jangly pop, um, but still very, very stonesy. They were all, you know, everything that they did sort of they would usually be referring to something the Stones did. You know, they were, they were way into the Stones with the faces. David uh, was a very good songwriter, a good guitar player, uh, and, a, and a good looking man. Uh, the ladies did like David and the little girls used to, there was an in-store they did when they released their own record. And all these little 14-year-old girls just lined up and got a kiss and started asking for kisses from David and Lowe. I mean, it was just, I'd, I'd heard about it. It's stuff of legend. <laughs> you first meet him in school? Uh, well, that was fourth grade, so I don't really remember that. I, don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. But we had this little band in, in, uh, in high school. Uh, we called it Rooster because we wanted to get our hair up, you know, like Ronnie Wood and Keith Richards. We wanted to be like that. So we wanted to be rock stars. So we had this thing where we went in the band room and we drug out uh, drums and and uh, had the amplifier in there, and we played songs, just two-piece. We did, you know, Brown Sugar and all that stuff before the Fabulous Novels. It was like one of our, one of our, our signature pieces. Signature pieces, <laughs> I guess. But uh, and all the black girls were going crazy, so we knew that, you know, just the two of us could do that. Then maybe we could, you know, build on that and make it, make it a lot more fun. David is, you know, he was our, he was our Keith Richards. You know, he was. Um, he was the, the Stones fanatic, you know, he really had all that stuff down. Um, and he, he was a very, really good songwriter too. He wrote some incredibly sweet, touching, you know, ballads too, you know. We didn't really know that about David. You saw this, you know, this Keith Richards kind of rocker with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth all the time. But he was a very good writer and a, and a good lyricist too. David would... I, th I hope he st somebody still has the record, but he would play. I remember being in Robbins at his house. We went down, and spent the weekend with his mom, and he played "Bitch" by the Rolling Stones over and over and over again just to get a lick. I mean, th there had to be a hole in that record because he played it over and over and over again, and that's what he. I mean, that's what he would do. And David would come up with these really great chords. Like, it would only be like maybe a measure and a half of something. But he would play that. I don't care where we were. At Soundcheck, he would play this thing over and over and over again. And eventually, it'd be in a song. Like, don't stop. That All that was was like this. There were certain songs that, that he wrote that were just basically this little thing. And it, and it might not have happened two months, three months, four months. Five months later, it was a song. This is a Capital Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Raleigh beside Wake Med on Sunnybrook Road. And I'm just hanging out here getting ready to go see my brother and good friend David Inlow. He's in there taking a little nap. He's uh, resting, trying to get better. Uh, who knows? Who knows what will happen? But it's kind of up to him. He has to fight it out. He's in there fighting it out right now. Tell me about what's going on that he is. What is he fighting out? He's, uh, he's had hepatitis C since 1998. And... Uh, How'd he get it? 
who knows? Who knows how he got it? Just not taking care of himself, I'm sure. Um, but he th thought he could kill the virus with more alcohol and doesn't seem to be working and it's put him in this place. And uh, so we're calling all friends and family and trying to get everybody over to hang out with him and get his spirits up. He has good days and bad days. Sometimes he makes sense and sometimes he don't. Um, but we're all hanging out, holding his hand, praying for him, whatever we can do. It's sad, and I just talked to his brother uh, a few weeks ago, um, and it really hurts everybody involved. You know, uh, his brother's gone out of his way. Everyone's gone out of their way to help Dave, but it's one of those cases where if you won't help yourself, nobody can help you. So it's just, a, it's, it's a tragedy. It really is, but there's not much you can do about it. As a person, David, I think was, I, I, lo I love him to death, absolutely love him to death, but I think he was absolutely tormented by something. I don't know what. Had a wonderful mother. His father died when he was, his father was quite young when he passed away. But I think there was something in his past or something that ate at him all the time. And he, David would be fine for two or three or four months. And then, you know, I, I don't know what it was. I have, I have absolutely no idea. It's like he was searching for something, trying to find something or something. But, um, but as far as creative, very creative person, very well-read person. Yeah, just amazing, but tormented. That's always a tormented soul. We're gonna do it until we do whatever it takes, you know, to become rich and famous. Because we're the best. Because we're stubborn. Because we're cute. Because we're fabulous. Any thoughts on the knobs or anything like that? Last words? Last thoughts? I just wish more people had seen it. Yeah.